Hi, Minesh Bakshi here, and I have a young man here who has an interesting story about his business, and I know you and I will be inspired with it because obviously every entrepreneur goes through this journey. It's not like you will not have this happen. You know, it is, nobody hands it over to you in a silver platter, typically speaking. So I'm very excited to have Mr. Prince Kapoor here today with us. Prince, welcome. Well, thanks for having me, uh, Mr. Bakshi. It's, it's honestly a pleasure to be here and it's uh, an honor to just be accepted for an interview. <laughs> well, you are, yeah. and again, here is the key for me. You know, you obviously you yeah. were introduced by a common friend. And when you told me your story, it was like, wow, I love listening to young people because here is what is going on for me. I'm mm -hmm. 57, quite old, right? <laughs> but the point is the younger you start as an entrepreneur, the better off you are yeah. if you are really serious about being on your own. Would you agree with me on that? I, I think I agree. And I think like, <laughs> I, I wish I started earlier. Like now that I'm in it, I'm just like, oh man, what was I doing earlier? Why didn't I start earlier, right? Well, I'm homeschooling my children. Oh, very my daughter cool. is 16, my son is 12, and they have no option but to be entrepreneur. I really have <laughs> cut off all the options because I know I some that. people are, some people are like, Minesh, that's taking too much of a risk. Right. Entrepreneurship is about taking a risk. 100%, I agree. Entrepreneurship is about having a vision yes. and then finding something that you really are excited about as a vision, then you yeah. can make it happen. So in your case, your story, you are somebody who does training, personal training, right? Right. So, so tell us a little bit about your story. Excellent. Um, so what we do now is very different than what I did when I first started. It's okay. actually really interesting. And, and you mentioned something really cool. You said that you, you've given your children no choice but to be entrepreneurs. <laughs> and and I, I've argued with a lot of people about like, when you have no choice but to succeed, what happens is you, you succeed. You find a way to make it work, right? Which I think is a, a, a t thing that I've been telling myself a lot lately is not giving myself so much choice because I actually ended up in business on accident. Um, hmm. And, and it's really cool because what I really wanted to do is I wanted to be an athlete. Um, I started playing sports when I was a junior in high school. I've never been introduced uh, to sports before. My parents are both uh, from India, Punjab. My mom's from Amritsar. And, and I'm going to be visiting Amritsar yeah, next month. Which is really where cool. The, where the Golden Temple is. I'm also going to visit Taj Mahal in Agra. Which is, which is super cool, right? And that's, yes. that's where my parents are from. My parents were born in the villages and like... You know, coming here to this country was such a great opportunity for them. They did not, you know, pay attention to sports and media and things around. They they were kind of hustlers. They yes. they were they put their head down and they worked every day. Like I don't remember a day that my parents didn't work. So because of that, I wasn't introduced to sports until a gym teacher saw me running and was like, "Hey, you should play football." And I was like, "What's football?" <laughs> <laughs> so he brought me on board and I started working out and I loved it. And I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I'm, I'm lifting some weights, yeah. I'm running, I'm playing football, and it's amazing. And I was like, how can I do this longer? Like, how well, I want to do this at the highest level possible. Like, what's the next level? I didn't play very much my junior year. <laughs> but we did go to States, which is really cool. And it was an amazing experience for me because I was like, wow, like, you can achieve so much. And I saw these other role models and captains on my team that I, I wanted to be like them. So to be like them, I had to go play in college. And every coach was like, that's not doable. Like, you you won't be a Division One player. Like, you can't do that. And I said, okay. <laughs> Sure. I'm sure there's a way to do it. So I tried to figure out a way to do it. And by trying to figure that out, I met a coach who did athlete training, right? And I met this coach. And then with this coach, I started training. And I, I consistently trained. And I trained very hard for a very long time. And then post-college, I told him, I still want to play football. Um, will you train me? And he said, I don't think it's doable, but you never know. So I'll train you. And he began training me. And I told him I would take out the trash, I'll vacuum, <laughs> I'll do whatever it takes. I, I we, you know, we're immigrant, uh, I'm an immigrant kid. We weren't very well off and, and training is very expensive, right? Or at least I thought that at the time, right? Now they have a different value perspective, but whatever. Yes, yes, I so, totally understand <laughs> right? that. So um, I, I did that. I, I vacuumed and I watched him train other people and I watched him train other people because I wasn't I wasn't the most like focused and form oriented and I just was really fast and wanted to do things very quickly. So I watched that very carefully and I was like, how does he train people? What does he do? And I started picking that up. And then he noticed that I started to pick it up when I would correct people's form and cue it. And then I think there were a couple of times where I had to start the session without him because of that. Like I happened, he happened to realize like, oh, Prince can do this. And, and I happened to realize that, wow, I think I could do this too. And Somehow, like, I started training and then he started having me run sessions and I still had, like, football on the brain. So I kept doing that. I did that for about a year and a half. And then I ended up um, going to Butler University where I walked on to the football team. So mm. they have a D1AA football team. So I did it. Like, I made the team. 
After that, I ended up walking onto the Division One track team there, which is also awesome. So I did that again. So two times. The coach said I couldn't do it. I did it twice just to prove him wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> which is really nothing cool. like a challenge. <laughs> yeah, right? I, I think that's very much my personality. You you competed. <laughs> you yes, told me to I'm compete, here to compete, right? Compete. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So um, I ended up like being there in college, and because of circumstance at home, I had to go back. And I, I was originally on the path to going to medical school, and that that mentor that I first had was like, Prince, I think you'd make a great coach. And I was on this path to medical school. And I was like, I got to go to medical school. I got to become a doctor. That's how you can do it. You know, this <laughs> kid, like Dr. Lawyer Engineer, Indians, which one do right. you want? Right. <laughs> you, know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I, I went back home and I started working with the coach because I was like, you know what? I think this is what I want to do. I'm going to give it a shot. My parents weren't very happy about that. And my cousins definitely weren't because they're like, Prince, you got to look out for your future. What about PA? What about RN? Whatever. And I said, let me do this. Let me do this for like a year, a year and a half. I can always go back to school, right? And they were like, okay, go ahead. So I started working with them and the way he had set up his business was I wasn't an employee. Hmm. I was um, a separate trainer who kind of subleased his location. I see. And you ate what you killed. So whatever I brought in was mine and I paid rent. So to me, I was like, I need to make this work. I have no choice, right? I, I, if I'm going to not do this and or not be a doctor and do this, then I'd really need to be good at it and I need to be uh, really out there. So I would go to different events. I would go to family events and I'd, I'd hand out my cards and I'd talk to everybody. If you were at Kroger in the line in front of me, you were talking to me about training. And it wasn't because like I wanted to have my own business. It was just because I truly believed that that fitness and training had had such an impact on me and my life and who I became as a man because I was always I wasn't always like this confident like kid I was a very timid kid I was always worried about what everyone thought of me and it really changed my life and I wanted that same feeling for everybody else I wanted them to experience that and that's why people are always like you're such a good salesman I was like I'm not I just really believe this like yeah your conviction shows and people right. can see the value in that and now they are gravitating towards you it's like wow I think I should do this. Right. <laughs> you know, that, and it's really funny how that worked out. And everyone always tells me that I'm like, no, literally, I believe you should do this. And anytime I believe in something, like I just, it, things work out. So I end up like, you know, working and working and working. And I wanted to build up my mentor's gym. And he has a very nice location for himself. He's an older gentleman and, and he's not necessarily in the phase where he wants to grow to the extent that I do, right? Um, or franchises, et cetera, whatever, which is on, on my mind. And because of that, we parted ways and, sure. and it was a great mentor to me, but we parted ways because of that, because he wanted to say where he was and, and, and build on that. And I wanted to do something completely different. I didn't realize that. I just, so whenever you don't align, it's because the visions are no longer matching, isn't it? Right, exactly. And like, I look back and I'm like, wow, like we, we weren't in line and it makes sense. Um, I wanted technology and this and that and all these other crazy things like social media and, and time investment in that and, and sales processes and whatever. Um, but we weren't aligned. So I ended up separating, ended up having to rent from another gym owner who I then thought I would help his location and we would grow together, right? Ultimately, I think after that one, that one wasn't aligned either. He wanted to do certain things and, and like I wanted to help out as many people as possible and whoever. It didn't matter to me. Like they didn't need to be an athlete. They didn't need to be like an adult. They didn't need to be private training. It could be like whoever you are, wherever you were, whether you're 300 pounds or 120 fit person, like it doesn't matter. I wanted to help you in the methodology that I know, the hustle method, as we now call it, right? So I realized that at that point, my brother and even my father and my mom, at that point, they were like, you need to do your own thing. And I think they could like sense the conviction. They they knew that I was working hard at it. So they're like, you need to do your own thing. So I like looked for locations. <laughs> I, I had like 20 members I had retained because, you know, as you move locations, you lose members. Yes. People <laughs> take any excuse to yeah. quit working out. <laughs> yes. Trust me. Um, and I ended up finding my own location and then a uh, 23 year old kid like signed a lease to a commercial location and needed drywall work. And the amount of work that I thought it would take, <laughs> the amount of money that I thought it would take was uh, not what it took. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, and I went in and I was like, I could just do it myself, right? I'll do these repairs. I, I'm not a repair guy. And I had my dad's really well connected. Um, you know, the immigrant community is pretty well connected here. And, and I really am thankful to being Indian and being an immigrant because we did have that tight knit community around us who we could reach out to for support and help. Um, and we found some people in the community who could who could help me uh, build it out, do some drywall work, etc. And we built up the gym. And at my first goal was like, well, if I can get 10 members, like, that's amazing, right? So I turned around um, opening up this location within three weeks. So I went drywall work, everything. I were there every day and did it. And then I was like, all right, well, 10 members. 
So I just grinded and grinded and grinded. And I got 10 members. And I was like, all right, well, 10 members. I looked at all the bills and things like that. And I was like, 10 members is not going to be not enough. enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's not enough. <laughs> this is not going to work. And, and by the way, at this time, like, I'm living with my dad and I'm, I'm not making any money because my thoughts were, well, like for this business to thrive, I, I shouldn't make any money, right? First, I should pay my employees and pay the bills and then I'll be fine. Um, that's how I thought it should run, <laughs> at least now I know differently. Um, and, and the way I, I ate, because my dad was out and I I'd like, you know, need to buy food, is I trained some restaurant owners' children. Their children were athletes and they're like, hey, train my kids. And I was like, great, will you feed me if I train your kids? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did. So <laughs> I ate at the restaurant, so I only ate at like, the shout out Plato's Coney Island and uh, Mamma Mia's. <laughs> and that was like my food, right? And that's the places where I ate. And French Joe's Bistro in Livonia, which is next to my gym. So I would eat at those places and I would train their children and I kept building it on. And, and they were kind enough to refer me over because I worked really hard for the children and the children, the results show actually, the children did really well in the sports that they played. We kept going, kept going. And then six months later, um, we're kind of at this point. I think every, every business has like four or five times in, in their in their lifetime where they had these points where they like make or break points, I think. And we hit this make or break point where I was like, there's enough money in here to make it through like two more months and I need to do something different. Right. So I was always, I'm always researching. I'm always trying to connect with other people like yourself who are, who are uh, business owners or have owned businesses and know what to do and how to do it. And I started investing into courses. Like I started investing into like social media courses, marketing courses, um, sales courses, which is not my background. And like a lot of people uh, tell me like, Hey, you're a really good business owner. I was like, well, that's cause I sucked. Like I was actually really bad. You were humble enough to be aware <laughs> that you could use help. Right. I, I just really didn't like know anything. I've, <laughs> I, I, I know that. Right. And I like looked around for these things. Cause I was like, I think these are the things that make people successful. These are the things that top gyms are doing. I need to know how to do them, how to do my numbers, sales processes, operations, um, employee management, all that good stuff. So I started doing that. And my younger brother came on board to help me out. He's very awesome. He's uh, younger than me. Um, started entrepreneurship for, before me. So he's, he's very intelligent in these matters. And he started helping me out. And we both started working together. So in the first two months, I think we like, we 30 X our company from where we were wow. at. Wow. Right. Like, or actually two to three months. So in two to three months, we went from making like, um, whatever, $1,000 or $2,000 per month to whatever, about, three, six, like four. Yeah, exactly. Like it, amazing. Like, we, like three, 6,000, 10,000. Then we went up to 15. And basically the thought was I stayed in the gym all day and whoever came in, I would meet with them and I trained all day and my brother would run our social media stuff and he would start that up. Right. And he would get the marketing in and I would then meet with the people and then I would serve them and fulfill them, which is cool because I didn't have to learn the other half, which is a huge other half. Which yes. And we started that process. We grew, we grew, we grew, we grew, we grew until we hit December. And we had grown so much and we didn't have sales process or operations or uh, number tracking and accounting and whatever that we were like, oh my God, we're in a weird point right now. We're December, everybody cancels a gym membership because it's holiday time, whatever, it's winter. And especially in Michigan, it's, it's the winter blues, right? So um, everyone's getting to the membership and I'm like, oh, what are we gonna do? My brother comes to me one day, he's like, hey, um, I don't know if we're going to make it through this month. And I was like, this is our second time in the next six months. And I was like, okay, all right. Well, um, I don't know what we're going to do. So we start doing some other things. We start, like, I get back to the research table and I start researching again. I start doing these things. And at this point in time, me and my brother are talking because he's running two companies. Okay. He's running, he's working with us and he's working at a totally different company, a trucking company, which he does very well on. And at that point in time, we both decided that like we both really need to be focused and that if we really wanted it to grow, we had to focus and we had to double down. So we started focusing. I told him to go his way and I went my way um, in, in a nice way, right? Like it was yeah, probably yeah. the best thing for the both of us. We actually sure. work better together now. And I started up the marketing end on my own end. And, and, and with that, I think everything really changed because although he was running our marketing, he was doing a good job. It wasn't from the standpoint of like ownership, right? It wasn't the, the same vision. It wasn't no. the same conviction behind it. Cause he's not from fitness and he doesn't understand that experience. Yeah, He's an outside person looking into the business. Whereas you are the person who is the real visionary in the business. Right. And then all of a sudden our marketing changed, which meant we grew again and we grew again and we grew again and we hit peaks that we never hit before in the entire year. So from that first year to second year, we grew, um, I think we grew 200%. Wow. Like, which is crazy, right? Like we had 200% growth and that was nuts. And I had to develop skills that I never had before. I had to learn how to hire. 
Yes. I had to learn how to fire, yes. <laughs> which was hard. I had to learn how to make decisions very quickly. I had to learn how to make bad decisions and just make them because sometimes you have to and then learn from them very quickly. I had to learn how to do data tracking, accounting, payroll, taxes, like all these things that, you know, they don't teach you when you're in kinesi kinesiology in, in college or... <laughs> you want to talk about that part. But yeah. yeah so, so let me go back to the... Sure. So you have survived a tremendous way. You are thriving. Right. You're doing well. Uh -huh. So who are the people that are ideal for your business? Um, people who are ideal for our business. And, and really, we can deal with anybody. We can deal with the professional mm -hmm. athlete all the way to the stay-at-home mom. Uh, where we're at right now is we are more of a transformation center. So we want people who essentially like have uh, weight loss, muscle building, or uh, uh, toning goals, essentially. People who are looking to make progress. Like, let's say you're at 180 and you know you want to be 160 and you want to maintain it because this is, the, this is the biggest heartbreaking thing that I see in this industry is I always see... Uh, people having gym membership, gym membership, gym membership, but never getting the results that they no, want, yeah, yeah. right? Yep. And, and it's frustrating, right? It's very frustrating. You're going continuously um, or you're not going continuously, right? There's the, the other end where you're not going. So here's what we do differently, right? Like people are, are, are hitting this yo-yo factor over and over again. Who we are is we are the last stop shop. Hmm. We're the last place that anyone would ever have to go for the fitness, nutrition, or accountability needs, right? That's what we do. We are looking to actually hold you accountable to your fitness and nutrition goals. So you come in, the first thing we do is we sit down with you and it takes about 30 to 40 minutes to get your history, see where you're at, see what you need to do. From there, we establish a plan and then we decide which plan is going to be best for you and what timeline we need to hit that plan in, right? Once we've got that down, we then sign you up. We then get you a nutrition orientation. You have a one-on-one -on -one nutrition consultation one-on-one -on -one, because we want to spend like individualized time to you to help you customize your program we do that one-on-one -on -one, we sit down we figure out everything else for you what foods you need to eat when you need to eat them etc and then we come up with a workout game plan for you right and then you start working out and a lot of people when they come in are like well how many days am i going to work out like seven like eight like or, or you know like am i going to work out like four hours at a time to lose this weight and i'm like no just give me three times a week if you did three times a week for 52 weeks, you'd be at 156 workouts by the end of the year, which is more than most people are doing, right? And, and it gets you consistent progress. It's consistency over intensity, which Makes most sense. people confuse the two, right? They assume that I need to be intense and not consistent. You just, it's consistency over time. So we get them working out. And then within three weeks, on average, anywhere can, anybody can lose anywhere from 15 to eight pounds, wow. which is pretty normal for us. Like we don't bat an eye. Now it's not about the weight but it's about the progress that they've made and how they've been consistent doing it. And then they lose more and then they feel good. And then for me, it's about consistency, right? It's about let's continue doing this. And I think the reason why it works with us is because we make it a part of your lifestyle and we hold you accountable to it. Now, if you don't show up for a workout, you're gonna get a text, you're gonna get a call. Like, hey, where are you? like Manish, where were you? Why weren't you here at the workout? And then you, like, you know, sometimes things happen. We understand like, oh, hey, uh, you know, I was uh, tutoring my daughter and I, I got extended out. Okay, totally understand, right? When are you coming in next? And it's got to be that way because ultimately, like, we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. Like, you know to work out. I know to work out. You know to eat right. I know to eat right. But we need to be reminded. We, we, need, be, we do need to be. And it helps in every business. So just right. for lack of time, let me ask you, how do people get hold of you? Because I would right. love to have more people find out about you. That's awesome. And I get in touch with you. Well, well I really appreciate that you, you feel confident in us to do that. But uh, if somebody were to get a hold of us, the best way to do that is, um, one, you could check out our Facebook page, which is at Hustle Fitness. Um, we're big on social media. So if you go to um, at Hustle Fitness, you'll see reviews. You'll see um, different experiences, different posts and things like that. The second way you could get a hold of us is at Hustle Fitness on Instagram. <laughs> um, the third way you can get a hold of us is at hustlefitness.com. Here's the caveat to that. It's H-S-T-L-E fitness.com. It's hustle without the U because we need you. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> uh, interesting. We, we couldn't get the one with the U, so I had to come up with something. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But um, basically, those are the two ways. Otherwise, you could call us at 734-205-9026. So any one of those are great ways to Do communicate with us. Do you want to repeat the number? Yeah, 734-205-9026. And that's where you guys get to get a hold of us. And, and we're incredibly welcoming, no matter what stage you're at, whether you're a beginner or whether you're a veteran or whether you're someone who's been a veteran looking to get back into shape, we can work with you. We're excellent at modifying. Our coaches are spectacular. It's taken me a long time to get our coaches up to where we need to be. And like our coaches are awesome. I'm very proud of our team. You would be... Um, 
I, I'm very confident. In fact, I work out in the sessions. I find a lot of gym owners don't work out in their own gym or in their own sessions with their coaches. And that just shows like a lack of faith to me. Mm. Um, I guess it's a personal opinion of mine, but I, I work out in our sessions with our coaches. Our coaches are spectacular. I'm very proud of the effort and uh, intensity that they bring to each session. Wow. Prince, it was a great pleasure to meet yeah. you today. I'm so glad that our viewers can understand more about your intensity of achieving oh, results, but you're also consistent <laughs> and that's what you want people to be doing there yes, as well. Totally. Thanks again for coming. I really appreciate it. I hope you got some good value from mm -hmm. his story, inspiring you to be achieving mm -hmm. more in your own life. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there are no other options but to succeed. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Pinch. you appreciate so much. You.